All right, you're looking live at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply Store. Early Saturday morning, about 9 o'clock, Chef Seth with us, Pete Bratton with us. What's up, Chef, Th Chef Seth from Food Envy? Good to see you. Hey, you're Chef, cooking some barbecue this morning. We're going nice to you, you, we're, we're let you show how a professional puts his butts together. <laughs> Is there one around here? Zoom in here. So, Seth, it. as you go through this, um, explain to everybody what you're doing. I'm going to get your smoker up to temp. We're getting there, so it's doing good. Sounds good. Thank you, Steve. Guys, I'm here at Steve Ray's Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in uh, Ottawa. Mm -hmm. um, today we're going to put some, on some pork butts. I'm going to tell you a couple of secrets that I like to do. Uh, don't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I like to do is fresh ground pepper. So these are peppercorns and I've got a little spice grinder. When you grind it fresh, it makes a big difference. You can really uh, tell the difference in the smell, like the, the texture of it. I like to use a little bit bigger peppercorns as I'm doing mine. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. It's pretty easy. You're going to need some power, aren't you, Seth? Yes, sir. Power we got. We subscribe to the Tennessee Valley Authority. Mm. I believe that's on. Perfect. Check to see if that's on. If it's not, I'll check go. Yeah, check that out. And now, what is that? This is a whole black peppercorns. And you're gonna and you're gonna grind it up. Yes, sir. Okay, and a coffee grinder. Uh, I assume. A little spice grinder. Spice grinder. Okay. Uh, it, it can be used for coffee as well. All right. Okay. Hey, we got power. We got power. We got power. And when you're doing pork butts, guys, you can do any kind of rub. I like salt and pepper because I put a barbecue sauce that we make on it later on so I can keep it a little bit more mild on the face. But I really like the uh, the texture it gives and the crust it gives on the outside of the butt. I found there's two ways to get really good at something. And one of those ways is practice. So when you have a little bit of free time, practice, practice. We talk about practice, man. Make dinner for the family. Make dinner for your neighbors. And the other thing is by surrounding yourself with people who know what they're talking about. And Steve Ray has been cooking barbecue for eight years. <laughs> eight years at least. Eight years. I'm not an old timer yet. I like to get inspiration from uh, from here as well. He's got all kinds of different sauces, different kinds of uh, pellets, different kinds of charcoal, and it's really fun to take a butt that you've done 50 times one way and change it up with a new spice, yeah, new rub, make it completely different. You're a salt and pepper guy on the outside, right? Yes, sir. That's that's, that's see, that's me, Seth. I love this. I love all kinds of spices, but on a, on a pork butt. It's tough to be just salt and pepper salt on the outside. Salt and pepper, man, clean, so good. And that's why I like that's why I like that uh, butcher barbecue grilling addiction, because that's the main ingredient in it is salt and pepper. You get that good flavor with a few other things thrown in there. Now these boneless, they are bone in. Bone in, okay. Close look right here. Yeah. Now, now these are. Where'd you get these at? That's a piece for me. That's an unusual looking pork butt, isn't it? It is. A little flat. There's your bone. Let's see. There's your bone right there. They're trimmed a little different. Here's one that's kind of trimmed. There's your there's your loin end. Here's your, your bone end back here. Now your loin end would be right there. So Steve, when you cook it, do you like to do fat side up or fat side down? Fat side up. Fat side up. Now Why do you like to do that? Give me some uh, some reasons. Because I'll tell you right now. Show me. Right here, right underneath this fat cap, I like for it to melt down into the butt. But right underneath that fat cap is the best meat on that butt. It's what? almost like caviar. That's What's that called? That you uh, I'm, 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 your, your friend. Your yeah, friend, that's, your, friend. Your, that's, that's the friendship meat. That's I don't know what friend. it's called. That's you know what it's called? you share a beer with, with your buddy <laughs> yeah. as you're getting ready to pull it. That's when you eat that. That's the pit boss meat right there. And it's very thin. There's not a whole lot. But in a contest, that's why you see people cooking four and five butts because they, 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 they've got to scrape it. That's what they're turning in for the judges as they're pulled. And now, folks, I'm telling you, if, 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 if you've never tried it, it's it's the best tasting. Pork butt for yourself. Yeah, it, it, it's it's amazing. 
But I, I just like to cook the fat side up. I feel like it says, I feel like it, it renders down into the into the meat. I, I totally and, agree. Uh, it's a that part, I've heard that part called the bacon before, and it's actually yeah. encapsulated between two layers of fat. There's a thin layer right there, and if you peel the first layer back and you have access to that, it is like butter. It's delicious. Now, see, I, I, I you know a lot of people worry about. You know, there's, a, there's a theory out there that the fat protects the meat. And they cook it fat side down, but I cook in pans, so I'm not worried about protecting the meat. Well, I'm glad you're wearing pants today, Steve. No, pans. Oh, I'm sorry. And, so I when, you're, and when you're cooking on my smoker, you're cooking in pans, too. We so, you see, so, you, so you'll understand. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree with you, too. I, I really like the fat rendering down into the meat. That's what yeah. I wanted to do. Yeah. They just soak in it. All right. Did you find your gloves? Uh, I did not. I got oh, okay. These. I got these. Okay, we'll do. Yeah, you will. So you got these from Jason over at Southeast Meat. I did. Good place. I mean, little Betty sits behind that. Man. Little Betty sits behind that desk. She's been sitting behind that desk for fifty years. I don't like. <laughs> I don't think anybody in the world as much as I like Miss Betty. Yeah, she's she's, she's great. Have a good day. She's great, isn't she? She mm. is. She is super duper. Get a look right here as we're putting some. Stuff. So as I'm doing this, it's okay to be very liberal with it for a couple of reasons. One, this is a big hunk of meat, so it's going to need a lot of flavor. And second, as we're putting this on, we're going to lose a lot of this in the smoking process as we're flipping it, turning it, moving it around, taking it off to wrap it. So it's okay to be a little bit liberal with it. Kind of pack it down so it sticks to that fat. Pete, move in a little closer on that pork butt. Gotcha. Don't trip on your wire. You got wires all over the place here. All right, see, we're going to cook these in pans? Yeah. Have you got enough? Yes, sir. All right. Now, what we're cooking them on, we're cooking them on a Southern Q gravity feed uh, model, limo model, made by uh, Scott Smith and the Southern Q smokers down in Ackworth, Georgia. The way this works, you pour your, you pour your charcoal in this chimney, and it goes down. Close your cap. Come on over here, Pete. And what you do, you light it. Come on in here. I think, I think you got enough cool to get in there. I'll help you. Yeah, you got a good shot there? Yeah. There you light it down in your firebox there. And you throw your wood chunks down there. And I'll go get some wood chunks here in just a second. You throw your wood chunks down there. And that's where you get your smoke flavor. And this fan, that's a fan and it's running right now. And it's controlled by this thermostat up here. You set your thermostat. Come on up here, get a close up on this beat, and I'll show you how you, you set that thermostat like so. Bring it down. We're going to take it to 240 right now, and that will keep this at a constant 240 degrees using that fan. And what's neat about it, you can run that off a of 110, or you can run it off a of 12 volt. Anybody that watches the show knows I'm a I'm a 12 volt fan, and. Um, this makes this thing totally portable. You can take it anywhere you want to. And this will hold. I'll, I'll open it real quick. We're trying to get warmed up. But I'll open it up real quick. You can see how big it is. It'll, it's got enough room for probably 30 bucks right there. So, uh, but Seth, how many are we doing today, Seth? 12. 12, that's plenty of room. We have room, room. We'll have room left up. Anybody watching wants to bring down a brisket or something, we'll throw it on for you. Seth will keep it on it all day. This, this, this is an amazing smoker, guys. And technology has made it today to where we can smoke and still like live your life and do things. You can set yeah. this and walk away from it. It's almost, it's very close to an oven. It's if got you, a thermostat and it sets it where you are. If you own a restaurant, um, a catering business, that's that's what, if you know, if you want to really sell a lot of barbecue, that's what you want. I've got one on my food truck that's a little bit bigger than that that I can get 50 butts on. And uh, that is, we will haul that over here occasionally when we do big cooks and cook on it but uh that is something that you can get up you literally you can get up at five o'clock in the morning put your meat on there set your temperature and uh check on it about every two or three hours just to throw your wood chunks in there and spritz and uh and then at the end of the day five o'clock afternoon you're done so i heard you say steve you set it at 240 is that what you're going to cook at is 240 yeah we'll start at 240 and we'll see what i and, and uh and i'll and i'll uh, i will uh Follow whatever whatever uh, Lee Seth wants to do. I like to, I like to start at 240 and just put them on there for an hour just to get the real good smoke action on them. And then if we want to ramp them up, uh, lots of times I cook 
I cook anywhere from 285 to 315. Hey, let's I get a picture of that right there, Seth, where you put them in. Here's his pan. There we go. Well, they look good. They look good. All right. Perfect. And we're still letting that smoker preheat just a little bit. We've got a little bit longer, but I'm going to go ahead and get these ready. Seth, what kind of wood do you want? Apple, pecan, hickory, or oak? You tell me. I've got it all. I like hickory, Steve. All right, let's do it. I feel like hickory gives it a little bit of a, more of a bite. You can actually taste a little bit more of the smoke. Almost kind of a rough smoke. And as weird as that sounds, I like it. It's got it's a little bit more bite to it. It's a hardwood. We carry the hickory, uh, the chunks, by Blues Hog. And what I like about these, Seth, is um, the, the people at Blues Hog, on their hickory and on their, I think on their apple, maybe on their oak, they take the bark off. There's no, there's no bark on these chunks. And what that does, that makes for nothing but real sweet, a real sweet smoke and a nice clean burn. Pete, come on over here and follow me if you can. And I'll show you how easy this is. We'll go ahead and get this smoke on and start getting the smoke in the chamber. You just open up that door and you just throw those chunks in. Give that a little tap. See how those embers drop down? And that's going to ignite that wood. That's going to put all the smoke you need into that, uh, into the chamber of that smoker. And, they'll, and, the, and the food will just be delicious. And the recovery, the recovery time on these is if you're cooking, say, at 240, you open the doors and you spritz and you take some temperature readings and you close them back up and it drops down to 130, it'll come back to 240 within five minutes. The, the recovery time is incredible. We use the uh, largest two size fans that Barbecue Guru makes. We use the larger fan. I use the large fan. You know, Seth, I even use that large fan on my small one, on, on my uh, little Limo Junior that I've got. Uh -huh. I use that large fan. It just it makes the recovery time is what I like. The recovery time? Uh, yeah, that you don't have to mess around waiting for that thing to heat up. It, it heats up right away. Don't play with your smoker, guys. If you're smoking, you want to get all that smoke absorbed. When you open the door, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but what happens is all that smoke rolls out and you lose temperature. Yeah, you that's lose flavor too. Yeah, Absolutely. Your goal is constant temperature, and that's what the, uh, the barbecue guru does. It's pretty neat. Is this and the barbecue guru you've got it hooked up to the yeah. bubble as well? Yep. They, do that, does that one also run on batteries? Um, not this one doesn't. The that's, smaller version actually runs on AA batteries. and I've, I've Okay, got, yeah, now I've got the part called the party, party key. key. Yeah, I've got yeah. that. I run my pit barrels on that. That's what I, I used to run my pit barrel on. That is, that's, rechargeable AA batteries. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. And there again, same same thing. Have you done so, ribs in your uh, your barrel? That's how I do my ribs on. Oh, man. You just hang them, they're great. They're really they're good. They're great. They're really good. Y'all are making me hungry. We're using, uh, now the wood, a lot of people like to use um, lump charcoal in these. Um, I've, not, I've never been a lump charcoal fan. I use, um, I'm using the Royal Oak uh, natural briquettes in here. And the reason I do that, Seth, is I know how this stuff burns, how regular briquettes burn, whether it's this, Booze Harbor, even Kingsford. I understand how it burns, the length of time it burns, and I'm used to it. And then I don't get any bridging. A lot of times lump charcoal, not so much in these bigger models, but in the smaller models of lump charcoal, you'll get a bridge in your chimney, then you'll get a big air gap. And that's not good. Your, chimney, your, your smoke will go out. And it doesn't happen. You've got to keep an eye on it. But uh, I like these because you don't, there's no chance in those things bridging and getting that air gap in it. And the flavor, the flavor on the uh, real old briquette, I mean, you can smell that hickory. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable good. It's, it's uh, it, real good. It yeah. parts a lot of smoke into the. Yeah. Meat. We'll let that thing hit 240, then we'll get all these pork butts on there. And, and it's amazing to come down here, folks. Come down here to Owl's Nest Barbecue mm -hmm. and look at this. You get to see mm -hmm. cooking going on. You get to look at all the cookers that Steve Ray's got down here. And man, he's got a ton of smokers down here. Yeah, if you've ever wanted to see a Southern Q in action, and see how these things work and see the efficiency of them. Come on down and just, you know, take a look, bring your camera. If you've been on the fence, you're thinking about getting one or you want one for your backyard, they make the uh, Limo Junior. They're real pricey. The Limo Junior in this model, which you can use in your backyard, you're looking at about $2,800 for, um, for the cooker and the uh, heat control system. 
but uh, it's a cooker that will literally last you forever. It's the last I mean, cooker you'll ever buy. Could you cook on that before it dies, Steve? Oh my goodness! Even on, on the Limo Junior, you can cook. You can squeeze twelve butts on it. Nine is is is, is better. But if you're just cooking in the backyard, you're never going to even cook nine. I mean, you're going to cook two or three at the most, probably, and it'll handle those. It'll handle those perfect. Steve, I saw you use one of these as just a warmer. You would oh, yeah. a big get together and you were putting your pans of food in there. Absolutely. You, warm. Yeah, that's a, the nice thing about these. You can set it, I mean, you can set it at 40 degrees. You can set it from 40 to, to 100 degrees. You can use it as a big cambo if you want to and just keep it uh, and, and keep it rolling like that. See, we're up to 180 degrees. Now we're looking for 240. It won't take it too much longer. Let's look over here at these butts again. See what's going on over here with Seth. Opening up some butts. Does pork freeze okay, Steve? Oh, absolutely, it'll freeze. I agree. Um, that's, that's one of the cool things about it is if you make a pork butt and you pull it, you can use a quart of barbecue. No, let me let me show you. Pounds. Let me show you how I how I have dinner for the next month. Yeah, let me show you how I do my hand. I'll get freezer, you one. Throw it together, quick, easy. Your wife will be happy. So you know, Seth, a lot of the, the stuff that I do, I, I actually freeze before I cook it. And a lot of people say, what do you do that for? But it just uh, seems to work really well for me. You may not freeze it and keep it frozen a long time, but even if it's overnight, it just seems to make it work a little better for me. It kind of tightens it up. I agree. Seth, this is some pork we did at the house last Sunday for, uh, for a little um, reception I had for County Commission candidate Jeff Eversall. And what I do is I'll put it in a half pan, cover it real tight with foil, and then I'll slide it into a two and a half gallon uh, plastic bag, a hefty bag, and that's how I'll put it in the refrigerator. And I've had this in the refrigerator since Sunday, and we, we got some out yesterday and ate it, and it was still delicious. And I'll tell you the best way to put, the best way to warm this stuff up, I found, is you take it out of this, you put it in that bag, throw some water in it, put it back in the microwave, and just crack that thing a little bit, that makes the, the best moist meat and it's it's delicious it holds that moisture it's, in, it's, so it's delicious six it's six days later yeah so we're gonna we're gonna heat this up for lunch today too so this is um all kinds of little tricks you know, that's the thing about barbecue you can you can hold i guess the hardest thing probably said you probably know is um is holding brisket that's that's usually the toughest thing to be honest with you, Steve, I don't mess with brisket a whole lot because it's a tricky meat. Yeah. And there's... It's, it's expensive. It's, it's best served fresh. Absolutely. You know, it's hard, you hard to hold it. Hold it yeah. like you can a pork butt. Yeah, and it's not, you know, people go to... People go to uh, people will go to barbecue restaurants and, uh, you know, they'll throw off on somebody's brisket. Well, that's because brisket, man, if you make brisket in the morning and if you're eating it at 5 in the afternoon, I mean, there are ways to hold it, don't get me wrong, and the, and the, the better restaurants know how, but it's... It's tough. It's tough. Brisket's one of you know. Pete, brisket's like prime rib. Brisket's the best when you take it out of the smoker, you put it in a cooler or cambo, and you let it rest for about two hours. Then you pull it out, put it on that slicing board, and get everybody around you, and just start slicing it. Have you a loaf of um, a white bread right there next to you, and just start slapping it on there and fold it in two. And passing them out. There, that's well, that's, what that's you the want best. To cook when you have a little get together. And you yeah. Want to get all the guys. That's the best. That's the best way to serve brisket. That is brisket is a, a, a is a super casual food. I like that little gizmo there, Seth. We it, it doesn't take long to chop that up either, does. And you can control. Like I said, I like mine to be a little bit cold. Whole black peppers. So you can control the consistency of. Oh, it. That smells good too. And that's something else that I don't think I pointed out. Kosher salt. If you're using salt. I like kosher salt. Do you use kosher or iodized, Steve? Uh, I use kosher salt or sea salt. Or sea salt. That, kosher salt's bigger grains. It absorbs yeah. the meat, especially uh, a little bit better, and even vegetables. I love kosher salt. If you've never cooked with it, grab some. It's two dollars for a giant bottle yeah. that lasts you forever, and it really elevates food. And if you don't like the course, you can throw it in one of those grinders. You can grind it up and make it small too, if you want That's to. True. But, uh, why is you know why salt is iodized now? Do you have any idea? I heard that. It's, it's something to do with our health, isn't it? Back in the 50s, we weren't getting enough iodine in our yeah. diet. So they found that was the easiest way to inject iodine into our diet is make iodized salt. Uh, it, it, this, the grains on iodized salt are so tiny, and it's very easy to over-salt. 
very easy when you use iodized salt. And now we have other ways to get iodine, and so don't, we don't really need it anymore in that yeah. way. But we still do it just because that's what we do. But doesn't your body have to have salt? I mean, it, if you don't have salt, you're dead. Yeah, yeah, it's necessary. And it also, there's a really important balance when you're salting and peppering food. I, I like to salt and pepper everything. But salt can really uh, bring out the flavor and not make something salty, but you put just enough to bring out the flavor as opposed to making the flavor of salt. You know, the best, I think the best barbecue sandwich is you put the uh, the meat on the meat on the top part of the bun, uh -huh. and you put a slice of tomato, salt the top of that tomato oh. with either sea salt or, or kosher salt, put a little bit of vinegar sauce on it. Vin yeah. I like vinegar. You can use sweet, but I like vinegar. And you put that bottom bun on there, and you smash it down, turn it over, and eat it. It's Delicious. The best. Tomato, tomato on a barbecue sandwich is it's better than slaw. I'm telling you, just try. It. Just you, you, I know you're thinking you're watching. You don't know what you're talking about, Steve. Yeah, I do. He does. Tomato on a barbecue sandwich is is awesome. I it's do better than say, salt. I, I don't care for tomato, but everything else I think you were right on with. I love. There, I got a sauce here okay, several months ago called Swamp Boys. Do you have that still? Yeah, I got that, yeah. Uh, it's a vinegar sauce and man, just a Red baggy, yeah. barbecue sandwich with uh, some of that on the bun, on a white bun. Oh man. Yellow sauce, vinegar Unreal. sauce, I love it. I love it. The yellow sauce is Y'all are making me so hungry. Yeah. Well, we're going to have some barbecue for lunch. See, what? Seth, we're at 202. We're on the way to 240 right now, buddy. We're almost there. If you hear some big noises behind us, we're getting a new sign put up. They're putting up a new digital sign here at the... Uh, at the midnight oil so they're going to be cranking up here in just a little bit making all kinds of manly noises with clam diggers and skid stairs and all kinds of cranes and stuff it's a, going to be an unusual day here at the gas station but there a lot of people say every day here is an unusual yeah, day there's always something going on here I, with between Niles and that barbecue mm -hmm. and midnight oil here at Steve Ray's, there's always something going on. There's nothing like is there's nothing like cranking up the smoker right next to the gas station. <laughs> yeah, the number one the, they say the number one uh, barbecue restaurant in Kansas City is uh, I think it's Joe, Joe's Barbecue. It's at a gas station. Is it really? Uh, yeah, yeah. A lot of gas stations started food. Colonel Sanders started his uh, chicken career at his gas station. Back room of gas station. I guess gas station people just create them. Creative. Whatever. I guess we just create them. Better place than to get folks <laughs> to come in here and get your gas, <laughs> and get your, get your barbecue, your burger, get all that stuff. Are they creative or hungry? <laughs> I think they might just be hungry. Ready to roll. By the way, while I'm sitting here with y'all today. My truck is over here at Midnight Oil. It's Steve Ray's Midnight Oil getting an oil change. Yeah, he's out there. Uh, while we're sitting here doing the... Melanie was out here. She, she we turned the TV or the cameras on. She she dished, she dished out, but uh, she's getting her uh, Lexus serviced. And uh, I think her husband will get some new Michelin tires. We got them ordered for her. So we got a lot of stuff going on here. A lot of stuff. But where is, um, is... Now, is this barbecue you're doing for an event, Seth? Or are you, going, are you doing this just for your food truck? This is actually for an event we've got coming up for uh, it's for Matt for Mayor. Uh, yeah. Especially tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, over to uh, Matt's farm. Yep. Good That's deal. Correct. Good deal. The whole farm. farm. A lot of people. It was beautiful out there. Have you been out there? I've, I've driven by it. I've never been invited. I've, I'm waiting for the, uh, the invitation. invitation. Yeah. Come with us tomorrow, Steve. <laughs> huh? Take it. Take it off and come with I've us. I've already Steve. got plans. <laughs> <laughs> I've already got plans. <laughs> I bought a new. I got. I bought a new toy. I'm gonna be playing with it at the house tomorrow. Mm. I can't unveil. I can't unveil it yet. It's the next. It's gonna be the next chapter of the Owlsness Barbecue Surprise Surprise toy. Mm. Yeah. We're always. We're always doing something. Pete. Pete. Pete's my neighbor. He'll come over. I'll, I'll show him tomorrow. Mm. So you got all this stuff. Uh, you know. Let's see. Hey, while we're here, while we're here waiting on the temperature to come up, Steve. Let's come over here a real close look. We're sitting down one of your pellet grills right here, too. Yeah. I always like to talk about that. Cause now, this is what Seth, Seth usually cooks his on a Green Mountain Grill, but he had so much, he had to come and use the big one. But Seth cooks his barbecue for the truck on your on your Green Mountain Grill. we got here. That is correct. They are so good. It is consistent all the time. Like, it, it is very easy, just like I said, to set it and forget it. That's one of yep. the reasons I love pellet grills. Uh, 
for something that you're doing all the time, I do like uh, wood smoke if, I, if I'm going to take time and spend a lot more time on it. But pellet grill works really good and they're really convenient. They actually will hook up to your Wi-Fi now so you can actually you can control it when you're not even yeah. there. How cool is that? When it gets to a certain point, it's got a meat probe. Barbecue Guru makes a makes one of those i don't i don't use it i'm always when i'm cooking i'm usually here there, yeah. I'm, I'm 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 either here or i'm i'm close so i don't really need i don't need a remote access but i'm uh, running to sam's or doing yeah something yeah you're busy time. Time, yeah and it, it makes it really convenient to look at my phone and see what temperature it's at and say oh it's cooking a little bit hot i think i want to turn that down or yeah. i can look at my meat probe that's in there and it tells me what temperature the meat is at and yep. when it gets to the 210 degree mark that i wanted at i can just go ahead and start cutting it down now seth when you start spritzing your meat what, what do you spritz with uh, apple cider vinegar. Uh, okay. Most of the time, I usually do a little. I, I, I hate telling all the secrets. I usually use mm. sugar water. I do a little bit of sugar water and apple cider vinegar yeah. mixed in with it. Well, see, I use squirt bottle, shake it up. Well, see, I use. I can't believe it's not butter spray butter. Oh, really? That's what I've always used for spritz. Hey, yeah. Man, I, I except on my chicken wings, I use uh, dill pickle juice. Steve, so. Steve showed me that, right? I can't believe it's not butter. I kind of laughed at it when he was doing it. Mm. Then I went and got me a little spray and mm. bottle of it and started using it. And it is. It's got a great flavor. It really. It keeps it keeps the meat nice and moist, and that's really basically all you're doing. Uh, once once you spritz with, it doesn't really change the flavor of your pork butt. No, but it does keep it moist throughout yeah. the process. Now the way the way this thing the way these insulated double walled insulated gravity feed smokers work, you can um, a lot of people will put a, a water a water pan in the bottom. You can do that. Sometimes they're made with water pans. I don't use water because these things, they, they're sealed so tight that uh, I've got no trouble having, uh, you know, the, the meat when it's done is moist and tender uh, just without the water. So, yeah. uh, you know, some people do it, some people don't. But just don't. like you were talking about earlier for different purposes, such as like if you use it for a warmer box, mm -hmm. it's a great thing to throw. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Water. Absolutely. absolutely. Is, absolutely. You can even bake on these. I don't know if you guys have thought about that, but there's a lot of really yep. cool, interesting desserts that you can do with a smoker. Uh, YouTube, check it out. Like I said, two things. Practice and ask somebody that knows. That's how you get good at something. I'm going to tell you something. The best things you can put in here is meatloaf and macaroni and cheese. Um, okay. Make make no okay. doubt about it. Macaroni and cheese. And I'm not and I'm not talking about cooking the macaroni and cheese and then putting it in here and just get smoke on I mean, there are plenty of recipes out there that you mix them up on your inside. You take the whole thing and you, you cook it for two hours. And it's it in that smoke. A lot of times I'll do uh, for Thanksgiving. My oven is full, so I'll throw. Um, I'll use my smoker for a lot of things, and I do like a smoked cream corn. Yeah, phenomenal. And if you're if you're doing a pork butt, make something inside in the last thirty minutes, forty five minutes, hour. Throw it on there. Throw it on there. Yeah. And you know the thing about these, Seth. You can you know we're going to cook. We're going to start at two forty. You can run this thing up to 450, 500 degrees and cook it just like an oven. Which is I mean they'll hold an oven again. They'll hold that heat as long as you've got. As long as you've got fuel available, charcoal to pour in there, you can uh, you can cook anything you want in these things. You can run the whole restaurant oh, on there. Get another look at all these butts right here. You got ten of them. Twelve. Twelve of them. So little guys. Shoot, they'll cook great. They'll cook great. Doesn't that salt and pepper look good on there? It does. It smells good too. That's what I like about it. Coarse ground pepper. I love the way it's it. I, you know, I've never, I've never thought about. It. I always get the. Um, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the uh, number 28, uh, or number no, number 18. I think it, no, it's 18. Uh, pepper, because I use it on my brisket, uh -huh. and uh, that's why I just always keep around the house. But I'm gonna get some of that. And Another secret: if you're using the spice grinder, which I like to use the spice grinder a lot because fresh ground, it, yeah. it makes a difference. But something else you can do is roasting things. Like, uh, for instance, with those peppercorns, if I was at my house, I would throw them in a saute pan, and you heat those up, and when you roast it, it lets all those essential oils come out. Now, I didn't say burn it, but just a little bit, like uh, bring it up to where you can, can't touch it anymore because it's so hot. And it'll release all the oils in there, and when you grind those, the fragrance is amazing. And not only with pepper, there's a lot of... Uh, there's all kinds of herbs you can do that are fresh ground, and it makes a big difference. A lot of people that make uh, brines use peppercorn pepper yeah it's, it's in the brine malcolm reeves brine uh for uh chicken has um has uh peppercorns in it we do pickles and uh we use them for our pickles as well so oh that'd, that'd be good do yeah. like a fire nice pickle so it's like a bread and butter pickle but it's also uh it's got a little bit of heat they're really good man i love i love pickles. On a barbecue sandwich seth we're at oh. 230 if you want to put those in here we can ramp this thing up 
and we can get it heated up and then we can bring it back down. You want to do that? All right. Go ahead and open those doors. And what I like about this, peek them on around here. Top layer, okay. You might, yeah, you can put them in there long ways. It's, 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 it's long enough for a full pan to put in there long ways so there won't be any problem um, with room. And now, we are only utilizing a tiny fraction of this smoker's capability right now. Now your hottest spot on the smoker is going to be on top, not on the bottom. You would think that it's going to be hotter on the bottom since that's where the fire comes out, but it's not. It's on, it's on the top. What does he do? It, it rises. He rises. He rises, wow. Professor. Mm. So that's kind of like the microwave. If you need something, if you got something you're cooking. There you go. Close that right. side for you. Got, got a good shot of that, Pete? Got it. Get a close up right there. Wait, can we cue the angel singing? <laughs> that, that looks good. That looks really good. Slam lock. We'll ramp this thing up and make that sure that fan comes on, stays on. And we'll coffee break, Steve. It's pretty good. We'll take it up to 300. Now we're going to bring it back down. We're not going to cook these at 300 because I'll tell you, the more the more you cook, the more more food you cook in one of these, the slower you need to cook. You know, it's not good to put you know 30 butts in there and try to cook it 300 degrees. You'll have a you'll have a fire you need to bring it down the more you cook you know you need to be in the 240 to 250 range when you do it like that well when you're doing that many butts you got time i mean you mean you need to make your time right you, know, you need to manage your time well so <coughs> that's really good and that's those are the th types of things you learn as you do it several times now th let's let's talk a little bit about the history of S chef seth i knew i knew you were the executive chef over at Garden Plaza before you started your food truck, Food Envy. But what, what was the beginning of Chef Seth from like high school and, and college? What, yeah. what was the beginning? I don't know if we want to go back that far. I don't know if we need to go back. Well, you're, not very, you're not very old, but what did, did you always want to cook? I mean, were you one of those guys that hung around your grandmother or your mom in the I, kitchen? I didn't do that so much, but I can tell you I really enjoy cooking food for people. and. For me, one of the best parts of my day is when somebody grabs some food from us on the truck and they go back to their car and eat it, you can actually watch from the truck. It's a little creepy saying this, but as they take a bite, they shake their head, they're pointing at the food, they start to dance. It's making people <laughs> happy. Dance. Uh, it's really cool to be able to make, and we serve about 100 people for lunch every day. Every shift we go, we try to serve about 100 people. So we have the ability to make 100 people's day a little bit better. And that's one of the cool things about it for me. That's why I enjoy doing it. I think that's just kind of my personality. Yeah. Um, but I started cooking uh, at Pizza Hut, uh, so I mastered Pizza Hut very early now, on. Now, what, what, what was that like when you know Pizza? People don't realize Pizza Hut used to be a good place to go eat. It they, was, they, they had, we actually made our own dough. So yeah. The things that I was exposed to was making fresh dough from start to finish in a Hobart mixer. Yeah. Uh, flour, water, sugar, yeast, uh, making our own dough, uh, and being able to handle volume and a lot of customers and taking care of that. So I learned a lot of good customer service skills. You're one of those guys that can do that? Oh, absolutely. Are you? Uh, oh. Yeah. I, I'm a fan of that. It's actually fun. <laughs> we, uh, I used to do that all the time. I worked at the Bald Headed Bistro after Pizza Hut and I was there for about 10 years. Uh -huh. uh, I met Chef Big Johnson, who is an incredible chef. He uh, He's almost retired now. He's been saying he's going to retire for about 20 years now. So, but he's a, uh, he works at First Baptist. He's the chef there. Uh huh. He, he was kind of a mentor to me and really took me under his wing and showed me a lot of things. And I learned so much. I worked at the Beast Show for about 10 years. And now for, for people that are from around here watching, that's a pretty high-end restaurant up here in Cleveland. It is. It's, it, it's very nice. I mean, it's more of a kind of like a special occasion place to go. It's not somewhere that, you go all the time. No, I mean, you'll find stuff like elk and things like that on the menu too, won't you? I mean, it's, 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 a, it's changed a little bit. It's a new ownership, so they've done things a little bit differently. It's still a great restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't attest to what they do now because I don't go in all the time. I don't go in as much as I should, but back in the day, we used to do uh, elk, bison, and that's one of the yeah. best things in the world is elk tenderloin. If you ever get the opportunity, you see that on the menu, try it. It's delicious. Medium rare. Elk tenderloin. Get, yeah. Don't get it beyond that. Uh, but a lot of different games, a lot of different steaks. I got really familiar with cooking steaks, and I, saw, I started doing a garden plaza. I was a chef there for about seven or eight years, and one of the cool parts about that job was meeting uh, a lot of the residents and staff, 
being able to make a lot of people happy every day with what we do. Uh, but as I started a food truck, I knew I was in the South and I needed to start doing barbecue. And I hadn't messed with barbecue very much. So what I did is ask around and everybody told me about Al's Nest Barbecue and Steve Ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I came and met Steve five years ago, maybe. Yeah. Something like that. And like I said, anytime I have a question, Steve has always been able to answer it. He's very knowledgeable. He, he enjoys doing this. This is what he loves to do. So somebody that likes to play baseball, they know a lot about baseball. Somebody that likes to football, uh, soccer, Steve knows a lot about barbecue. It's what he enjoys doing. Well, I try to do the, 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 the smokers that I sell. I try to, I try to get as, obviously I try to get as much information as I can on them. Right. And I try, I try not to overcomplicate it. So many people watch, you know, they watch YouTube and they watch all these different videos and they watch all these people doing weird things to food and meat, like somebody trimming a, a pork butt. I mean, you know, taking 35 minutes to trim a pork butt. I didn't even see you put a knife to a pork butt. No, I mean, you're, I mean, it's, it's you, you don't need to unless you know unless you're in a competition. Well, that's a different world than what we do now, and um, and they, they, they overcomplicate it, and it's, they should oversimplify it. That's the thing about barbecue. I mean, it's basically Keep it stupid simple. Yeah, put put the put the food on the smoker and. Keep it moist, the keep it seasoned, up. and this. Remember what I always what I always tell people, and it, and it was, and it was, it was, it was. This secret was given to me by Donnie Bray of Warren County Pork Choppers years ago when I went to his barbecue school. But and, and, and you know, Seth, it, it goes for any any chef. I believe will tell you the same thing. The first thing your friends, family, customer taste is the last thing you put on that food. So whatever seasoning you put on there last is the first thing they're going to taste. Right. So that's when you make that's when you can make your 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 pow that that experience for them is whether you put you know pepper, salt, uh, whatever you know a, a barbecue rub, pecan rub. You know, you know what a pecan rub oh, freak on that I am. You know, I love pecan, and um, people will say, "What is that? It's you know it's so savory and so sweet. What's pecan? It's just got a, such a unique taste." So, it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, when you when you cook, remember little things like that. I mean, I'm certainly I'm not a cook. I'm not a chef by any stretch of the imagination. You know, what I, you know what I did this morning. I had I bought I bought two um, potato salads. I had two left over from last Sunday. I've, I've had them in the refrigerator, so I got them out. And I and I you, know, you ever made fried potatoes like yeah. get mashed potatoes and put them in there. And I thought. I wonder what this would taste like. <laughs> I did it. I did it. I did it. I got out a big spoon and put it in the pan and uh, a potato salad and, and pan fried it. How'd it work? It was delicious. I did a little bit more butter on it, but it was good. I mean, just regular old potato salad. Isn't that stupid? I mean, but but that's food courage right there, you know? It is. And that's what it takes sometimes. It's some <laughs> yeah, courage. Yeah. I love leftovers. You can do, I feel a lot more confident with leftovers because I know I'm not going to ruin a dinner. That, that's, right. that's exactly right. It's so a, my but, favorite breakfast in the world is leftover tacos from the night before, like some uh, chorizo or oh, steak yeah. you have leftover. Stay that, make an omelet out of the next morning. Magnificent. Absolutely, absolutely. Seth, how do they? I've always wondered, and I've been, I, I, I've been, yeah, I, I was playing around with different foods. I've kind, I kind of got to get on a like like last last year I got on chili and stews, and uh, this year I've been I've been messing around with omelets. How do you how do you guys do those real Thin omelets that you get at restaurants that taste almost like like, a, uh, like it's really is it it's real super thin and it's got stuff inside of it and it's like it's folded over like an almost like an envelope. Looks like a French omelet. A French omelet. Okay. Yes. And with that, a couple different ways you can do that. It matters how much egg you put in the pan. That's one of the secrets. Is you don't need a, a bunch and you can do uh, just scrambled eggs like normal. Put a little bit of milk or heavy cream in it if you have it stir it up make it a little bit thinner okay and a secret as well is saute your vegetables beforehand if you're doing what do you like in there peppers mushrooms yeah mushrooms uh cheese uh, uh i like lettuce i like chopped up lettuce but or you know anything yeah. chopped up lettuce no not lettuce i'm sorry celery celery okay. yeah yeah and those things not the cheese obviously but saute those vegetables beforehand and then you put your omelet in if you're doing a french style omelet it's it doesn't have time to cook the vegetables if you don't saute them first. Okay. So I want to start with the vegetables and then you can we'll do it one or two ways. You can take the vegetables out and set them to the side and make an omelet and put them in it. Or you can just cook them with the omelet right in it as well. Okay. It up. So you just don't use many eggs. Keep it thin. Now what about a, what, add, add now what kind of, should I have a, should I have a griddle 
Does it work better on a griddle or in a, in a, in a it larger pan? It depends pan? on how big of an omelet you want. Uh, mm -hmm. I like to use a six inch pan. It's uh, the perfect size for me. Uh, oh, the real one. Six okay, inch yeah. Pan. yeah that's kind of what they use like at, uh, like at the Holiday Inn downstairs. Yes. They're doing pan omelets like that. That's yeah. actually why I got so good at it. I used to do an omelet station for uh, the residents at Garden Plaza. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. And that was one of the favorite mornings for everybody. It was really fun. I got to interact with everybody. On the Pete, what we'll do, we'll come out here one morning and we'll get the griddle on the uh, Green Mountain Grill, we'll do some uh, what they call French omelets. Yeah. And we'll serve up some French omelets one morning. That'd be awesome. That sounds like fun. We can even throw a little barbecue in there, I'll bet. Oh, man, that's an, an, uh, leftovers. I did a, a barbecue omelet the other day. Anything I have left over, I just like throw it in some eggs. Oh, I love it's it. delicious. I love it. I love it. So we're already back at 202, and we've got this thing. We've got this thing. It, it went down to 117 when we put all that meat in there. Now, we've got 12 pork butts in there now. Which and are it, at 40 degrees as we Yeah, and it, we're, already about, we're already up to 203, and that was just uh, about 10 minutes ago. Yeah. So, so you can see how quick these things, how quick these things recover. You talked about not opening this, you know, key is y'all talk about not opening this thing up too often, right, to keep your heat and all that. Yeah. Stuff. So how long now that you got it in there, when's the next time you're going to go in and open it up and take them out? Seth, for your butts, what would you do? Probably, they're a little bit smaller. Right now it's... 9.30. Probably about 1 o'clock, 12.30, 1 o'clock. We'll take a peep at them, see what they're looking like. And then, will you spritz them when you go in or other than? Will you spritz them then? That's when I usually spritz yeah. them, yep. Well, see, if it was me, I'd go in a little sooner. But that's just different styles, that's all. Yeah. It probably, probably, probably the way Seth does is probably right, but that's just my... I, I can't stand not to look. Well, this is a, this is a new <laughs> smoker for me, so I... You may, you may be anxious to check it out. I yeah. don't know. Now, see, Pete, what we got coming out of the uh, coming out of the exhaust now, we've got the uh, the blue smoke, the blue invisible smoke. Now, that thing is that, what that means is that thing is really humming, and it's really it's burning efficiently now. So it's getting a lot of flavor on it. You don't need to see smoke to get smoke flavor. No, absolutely. you don't. Actually, matter of fact, fact, you don't want to see a lot of smoke. That's what I was going to say. A lot of times, the clear smoke that you don't see is really where it's at. Yeah. If you're seeing a ton of smoke, if you see black smoke, get your meat off immediately. But white smoke is okay. But you don't want to see a ton of smoke. Now, what I think it's important to do is to make sure to keep a plenty of wood down here in the wood box because number one, cold meat. Cold meat absorbs smoke better than hot meat, and you want to keep a lot of um, you want to keep a lot of flavorful uh, wood wood in there to make that meat. You, you know, it's sucking it up now. That's what that's what's going to give it that barbecue taste. So early on, the most yeah, important. early on is more important than you know. It's only going to take it's only going to take smoke probably up to 145 or 150 degrees, and that's going to be about as much as you can put on. That's why everybody wraps at about 165 degrees because you're you're done. At, at 165, you're basically done with the barbecue. After that, you just want to get it done, and that's like a little bit more of that fat rendered off, and it makes it a yeah. lot easier to pull. And that's what yeah. you want to do. And what I do is I'll, I don't know how you do it. Says so I wrap it, and I would wrap that thing up to 310 degrees, not yeah. with this many butts on it though. But if I was just doing three or four butts, and I'd ramp it up there with that many butts, I'm going to leave. I'm going to let it stay down there because I don't want to burn. I don't want anything to get burned. Right. So Seth, well, you wrap your butts when you get a certain temperature? About 160, 165. Okay. Uh, Steve actually, I was just thinking about something that Steve taught me a while back, uh, the difference in pulled pork and chopped pork. Uh, where we're from, I feel like a lot of times people usually do pulled pork here. I like it a little bit better. The chopped pork, you actually take it to, what? have you done the chopped pork intentionally before? No, I've only the only time I've ever done chop, chop pork is when I didn't get it all the way, all the way done in that middle roast. Probably 180. Yeah, that middle that middle roast is a little wanky, and you, and you got to chop it up. You can chop it up, and it's not as it's not as good. I, I don't think it's as good. Well, that, people like that though. Well, but that but that piece of meat in the butt it, itself is not that good. good. Yeah. You know, pork butt is so. It, we talked about this what three weeks ago, Pete. Yeah. You know, there's so many different tastes. You got the loin. Uh, you know where the where the where the butt connects to the the back where you got the, the loin part. You've got that bacon part under they eat the fat. You got those tubes that are so tender. And you got the uh, the horn back there by the um, by, by the, the bone that's that's got an unusual texture 
but it's but it's got a great taste. Really good. But then you got that little roast down in there that's like a, I mean, it's just yeah. there's nothing. You just want to mix it up with the good meat. When you pull the million buds, it's, it is really cool to uh, oh, yeah. kind of separate those out. And a lot of times if I'm doing a party, I'll put those on a platter and you can eat from that one pork butt, you can have eight different cuts of meat. And yeah. each one have a little thing of sauce dipping in there. Each one is going to be a little bit different. Yeah, some people, there's, there's a family that, that comes here that when we do those big pork, uh, pork cooks, they will tell me they want three pork butts, but they don't want them cooked all the way. We'll pull theirs when we get ready to wrap. We'll pull theirs at 165 because they like to slice it. Oh, really? And then 165, you can still slice it. And then, you know, 210, you can't slice it anymore. It's going to fall. Yeah, 165, they'll slice it and they eat it like pork steaks. And so, you know, to eat your own. Yeah. That's one of the things I learned when I was working at a Garden Plaza. When I first started, I think we had about 200 residents and I, I thought to myself, it's, it's really hard to please 200 people at one time. And it took me about two days and with my head hung low, I said, it's impossible to please 200 people at one time. <laughs> and it, everybody, food food has a lot of different effects on people from when his mother did it. Maybe 10% of them were over 80. Oh, 10%. <laughs> yeah, they are going to please them anyway. It's hard enough please us over 60. Absolutely. But their mom, all their moms did it in a different way. Their their aunt did it in a different way. And that's what they always want. And that's what they, they want to connect to is those memories from food. And food has that ability to do for people. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize what a food critic my dad was when he was over 75 years old. I mean, everywhere we went, and, and you know, he was complaining about it. I said, you know, I didn't know you were such a food critic. <laughs> you know, you're always complaining about the food now. It comes out real quick. Yeah, yeah. That's, you don't have a, you don't have a lot of freedom, so that's one of the things that you get access to is what I'm going to put in my body. Yeah, it's really food. important. It's funny. It's funny. People are so funny. Now, when you pull your set, do you, will you hand pull all of these? Yes, absolutely. I've actually, uh, there's a tool called the Porkinator. Yeah. And I've used that before, but I, I'm a little bit more intricate than the Porkinator, I feel yeah. like. I like to get, I, I can't tell you how many times I've eaten barbecue at a place and bit into something and had like a a big chunk of fat or a mist vein or just something that's different in there that I didn't like. So I'm really particular about when I'm pulling it. We kind of hand select everything. When we do a big we do. cook, we'll, we'll use that. It okay. attaches to a, a drill. A drill? Yeah. A huge yeah. cook, absolutely. And we'll use it. Stand. But what we do, uh, when we'll, we'll set up a station. When we pull it, we'll pour it into a tub like that. Like you've got there, that uh, that bus tub. Uh -huh. We'll pour it in there and send, we'll have somebody go through it. Because right. we use that porkinator that for some reason, it gets a, a big old fat ball. A wad. When, when you, and it gets a wad. All the fat comes to one place on those. And you got to, if you serve that, your, your history, they'll never, you'll never buy anything from you again. Right. That's the disgusting thing. It, <laughs> so it you is. pull that off and, you know, throw it away or give it to the dog That's, or something. I feel like the, the porkinator is really strong, too, and I feel like it, it does a, a little bit to the texture that I don't like, too, yeah. that I noticed. Mm -hmm. It changes the texture a little bit. It's well, it makes it stringier. Not as silky, yeah. No, it makes it stringier. Yeah. And, and I, I like that, but uh, I think it makes a better sandwich when you're putting it on a sandwich. But I, I, I hand-pull 90% of the butts I do. I just hand-pull them. Because it does, after you're done... And I use and I, I double glove it. I use my hands. A lot of people like to use the claws, but yeah, this is a great tool that Steve told me about a while back too. These are uh, warm gloves. I think you can get these on Amazon for maybe five dollars for a box of a lot. I don't know, but you can put these on and then use gloves over top of them so they stay clean. So you can actually touch hot things at that point if yeah. you're using nitrile gloves. So. As I'm pulling these pans out, instead of having a towel that I would normally have to do within a restaurant, I can put those gloves on, the white cotton hey, gloves, the nitrile gloves, and you can touch those pans like directly, or you can also pull hot barbecue. Yeah. Basically just makes it into oven mitts with fingers and usable digits. So we're almost back, we're, almost, we're at 234 now. So you, you see, it doesn't, it doesn't take long for these things to recover. Now we got, we've got 12, we got 12 pork butts on there, that's probably, um, I saw the size, and that's probably 85 pounds of meat. That's what I would guess, too, yeah. 80 pounds. And, um, and this thing's already recovered up to 234. And uh, what we'll do is we'll set it at 240. I've got to set it at 300 right now because I want that fan to, um, I just want to, because with these things, with this, this thing is so smart, when it senses it's getting close to the set temperature, it'll start thumping. It'll go off and on, off and on. But I want this thing to get heat up quick. So you I can just, actually I'm, listen for it and I'm tell trying, when yeah, the motor kicks on. I'm trying to, I'm just trying what I'm doing, I'm trying to trick it a little bit. Steve, you had your hand just sitting right on the top of that, laid on there. 
and it wasn't hot, it wasn't. Oh no, 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 that thing, that, that thing double engine, you could, you could run this thing at 300 degrees and be able to do that. It's just warm enough to put uh, bread on if you're making sandwiches and you wanted to uh, warm the buns. What a great idea. Yeah, I mean, it's I've never it, warmed buns on the top of my smoker, but that's a great yeah, idea. Yeah, it's just, it's just per the perfect place. It's the perfect place. See, we're here, we're, there's 240 right there. I've got a set of three, so we're going to bring it back down to 240. And now, now we're cooking. We are, we are, we are 20 minutes till 10 and we are cooking oh. pork butts. So we are rolling now. Well, there you go. There's a, there's a good little uh, lesson in uh, how to do a big cook. Uh, Chef Seth, thank you so much for coming in, man. You're welcome. I appreciate that so much. I appreciate you helping me out, Steve. Uh, if you, you guys are out today in Udawa, stop by, grab a sauce, walk around. Steve, would you be mad if somebody came in and didn't buy anything? No, no. People do it all the time. <laughs> Come in, bro. I believe it. I'm not thrilled. I'm not thrilled. <laughs> Ask questions. That's how a lot of times I'll get inspiration to come in and just see. Like, he has so many different things to check out. Well, what we time. get, what we get, we get a lot. We get a lot of doubters. We get, we get. There's a lot of doubters out there. And you know how how good could it be? You know, people will say, "Man, this place is cool." Oh, how good could it be? You know, they're used to going to the hardware store. You know, a couple of rows of sauce, a couple of rows of that. and then they come in and they go, "Oh my gosh, this is this is unbelievable." And they had no intention of buying anything; they just want to see because how good could it be? And then they go over there on the side where I keep the boxes for for shopping. They'll grab a box and they'll fill it up and they'll, and they'll buy a hundred dollars worth of stuff. If, they say, I've been looking for this stuff, or I get this stuff online, and it's more expensive. Right. The, the, the stuff online that you buy from these guys is more expensive. Number one, just per, the per unit item is more expensive. Then you got to throw in the shipping. So, I mean, we're, we're less expensive than what you can buy it online. My wife, Karen, if you're watching, look away for just a minute. Mm -hmm. There's more times than I care to admit that I came in not expecting to buy anything from here. Mm -hmm and walked out with too much stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of cool stuff. Like I said, every time I come in, I see like, oh man, that would be delicious. I want to try that. I want to try that. Do you still have the deal on barbecue sauces, like three for something? Mm -hmm. you do that? No, I was, give, I was giving them away. Oh, really? I was giving them away, yeah. We gave them all away, so there's those. No more, no more, I mean, good prices. There's no, there's no specials. Now, I do have a special if you, when you, you buy. You have that one special still. Buy three, get the fourth at regular price. Yeah, yeah. Here, right here. Now, if you buy, if you buy a bag of Royal Oak, briquettes or Royal Oak lump chocolate that we have, you get absolutely free a Royal Oak, a box of Royal Oak tumbleweeds. And this is the best. That's why I started this fire with. You saw how quick that fire started. Can you only start smoker fires with those? No, you thought you, no, you start, you start you a campfire. Fire, you have a box of those on yeah. the ground? I mean, it's a great way to start a, a fire. Great way. Absolutely free. Four ninety five value. We're right here at the Midnight Oil. Don't forget, we've got, the, if you want some wood chunks, we've got the Blues Hog wood chunks in stock. Hickory, cherry, apple, and um, pecan. That's the other pecan. And if you're a pecan freak like I am, it's good stuff. It's good Seth, stuff. thank you so much. If you guys are out in Cleveland Pete, today, thank you so much. Stop by Food Envy. You can always find out where we're at. Check our Tuesday schedule drop uh, on Facebook or Instagram, Envy Food Truck. NV Food Truck. Guys, have a great day. Thanks for joining us. Chef Seth, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for joining us here on the Owls Nest Barbecue Saturday Show. We really do appreciate it. Thanks, Chef Seth, for so uh, stopping by. Uh, Food NV Food Truck. Check it out on Facebook. He'll tell you where he's going to be. He'll be at the Hollander Farm tomorrow doing a special event for Matt Hollander, who's running for mayor of Hamilton County. And um, so he'll be serving them. But uh, check for, uh, for the schedule of Food Envy on the Facebook page and uh, you'll be glad you did. Sh uh, Chef Seth puts out some great food. Come by and see us. They will be open until 4 o'clock here at the Owls Nest Barbecue Supply Store in Udawa. Until next Saturday, for Pete Branton.